So you've got a turbo diesel engine and you really are thinking about upgrading it, but the debate is whether you should have 50 horsepower, 100 horsepower or 150 horsepower. Now to a lot of people that seems like a no brainer. Surely you just go with as much power as you can, but actually it's far more complex than that. And you've got to look at a whole variety of factors, including how deep your pockets are and what you're going to be using the car for. So in this video, we're gonna look at the pros and cons of each of these different stages of tuning and see which is the most appropriate option for you to go for in your car project. So how far do you take your TDI tuning project? Diesels have come a long way, they offer so much. I'm familiar with a lot of the Volkswagen Audi diesels and the BMW diesel engines, they all offer phenomenal power gains. But just generally across the board, if you've got a modern turbo diesel engine, there is loads of power just waiting to be unlocked. Now, the 50 horsepower is quite a noticeable jump in your power. You will certainly appreciate having an extra 50 ponies under your right foot. And the easiest way of doing that on most cars is just to get it remapped. So changing the software settings within the computer will dramatically alter the way the engine works. We've got other videos that go into remapping and the pros and cons and things to look out for. But one of the easiest ways of adding power has to be a remap. So depending on where you live and what your options are, you'll look looking at around about 300 to 500 for a remap. Obviously you tend to get what you pay for and I would always recommend that you go to a specialist that knows your car and your car's engine very well because there's often little idiosyncrasies that need to be taken into account when a map is applied to your car. So that works out at around about 10 pounds dollars whatever your local unit of currency is for every horsepower upgrade which is quite cost effective and most people can live with that and the downsides of having a remap is merely that you need to maintain the car more fastidiously so by remapping you've reduced the manufacturer's wide margins of error for bad fuel neglecting the servicing and you've really tightened that up so the only real cost to you is having to get your car serviced a little more regularly so maybe instead of 12,000 miles you would reduce your service intervals to about 9,000 miles and the critical component really is getting that engine oil changed and getting the engine checked over. If you could just boot that like button that would really help us to get out there and let us know in the comments what turbo diesel engine you've got and if we haven't done a video on it already I will certainly add it to the production list and make sure that we cover that and provide some sort of tuning guide for your turbo diesel engine in the future. So adding another 100 horsepower there's very few cars there are a few but there's very few that you you can do that with just a remap alone. So the cost starts to increase. So at a very basic level, assuming your car has got good fuel injectors, good fuel pump, and is pretty solid and can tolerate that sort of power increase, then you really need to be looking at upgrading the turbo and getting a remap. Now a stock turbo for most cars, a good quality OEM replacement is round about the 500 to the 800 mark. They won't usually give you very much in terms of extra performance unless your existing turbo was really old and tired. So for a, a performance turbo upgrade, you're looking at spending round about 3,000 to 4,000, depending on where you are, and that'll get you a decent quality hybrid turbo. And by adding 100 horsepower to the engine, your engine is now going to output round about 250 horsepower, just taking an average of what we see on most turbo diesel engines. So that cost alone works out at about 33 pounds per horsepower. So you can see it's dramatically increased now the extra horsepower as we start going over the 50 horsepower increase is really starting to get more and more expensive and you need to also start thinking about other things in the car so most people will probably need to start thinking about replacing the injectors you'll certainly be running at the limits of most factory injectors and at those power levels it certainly makes sense to increase the ability of the injectors to squirt fuel into your diesel engine but also the fuel pump it's got to supply enough fuel to those injectors in the first place so it'd be silly to tune your car dramatically and have a weak spot just in the fuel system so the downsides of that really is the extra cost in servicing as we've already mentioned but you're going to get through more tires your brakes are going to be used a lot more you're going to be exploiting that extra power and it's going to put extra wear and tear on the car itself so if you've got an automatic gearbox you also start getting problems the more power you're adding because most automatic gearboxes come with some kind of torque limiter 
cutter. So that sets effectively a torque limit that the engine outputs. And as the power output starts to hit that limit, it starts cutting back on the power and it's certainly restricting what you can get. So pushing power a little bit further can require a little extra investment with auto boxes just to make sure that you've got the required adjustments to the software that runs the gearbox and make sure that everything will be working effectively for you at your new power level. So how about adding 150 horsepower to your turbo diesel engine? Well, this starts to get into the realms of needing to upgrade a lot of other components within the engine for most turbo diesel engines. So you'd be looking at strengthening the rods, the pistons, the crank, just making sure that the head bolts are up to the job of keeping everything tight and clamped together. And you certainly need to upgrade the turbo. You'll need quite a beefy turbo to be outputting this much power. And you will probably experience a bit of low end lag now. You're starting to push those higher power figures. But the big thing to bear in mind is track so putting that much traction through your car, if you've got a front wheel drive setup, I know the BMW drivers are probably laughing at this statement, but if your car is front wheel drive, there is a theoretical limit to the amount of usable power that you can put through the front wheels. And in most cars and most setups, it's around about 225, 250 horsepower. Anything more than that, it's certainly fun, but you'll get so much traction issues off the line, it'll almost be unusable. So you'll be way wasting your money effectively. So you can address a lot of the traction problems with a, a better differential, a torque sensing differential. There's a lot of different options out there. We've got videos coming up dealing with traction issues and how to address those, but it will also dramatically reduce the reliability of the engine. Everything within that engine is working so much harder. So you notice with motorsport teams, they often strip the engines down after a, a season or half a season's racing and need to rebuild a lot of components. And that's just because the engine has been doing a lot more work. So effectively you'll be putting 10 years of extra wear and tear on the car within two or three years, depending on your driving style and what car you've got obviously but you have dramatically increased the likelihood of having a breakdown or failure just because you're pushing all of the components all of the pipes everything within the engine to the absolute limits so in terms of cost wise it's really hard to give a ballpark because engines are so different and cars are so different but just looking at some of the Volkswagen Audi group setups if I wanted to add 150 horsepower I'd be looking at spending round about 8,000 which is a significant significant chunk of money. For a lot of people that is more than they've paid for the car in the first place. But it's a real investment in getting extra power and having a lot more fun with your car. So if you factor that down to the cost per extra horsepower, you're now looking at 55 per horsepower. So the cost per horsepower increases dramatically as you start increasing the power levels and the drawbacks and downsides do. So at the beginning, you may just have been thinking, I'll go for the maximum that I can. I've got really deep pockets, so it doesn't matter. But there's all those other factors that you need to take into account on that project, just to make sure that the car doesn't break down and you don't experience these problems. So a few conclusions then. It's not obvious that you should just go for the maximum power. You want to think about having usable power. So you've got to think about the transmission of your car, whether it's just front wheel drive, which is certainly limiting, or whether you've got rear wheel drive or some kind of four wheel drive system where you're able to fully utilize the power. And you also need to think about the ongoing costs. The more power you add, the more it's going to cost to maintain that car over the period of time. So that's certainly something you should bear in mind and sit down and carefully plan your project. You will find that a small but modest and noticeable power increase is relatively cheap and very quick to execute and does very little to be detrimental to the longevity of your car. But as you start increasing the power, you start to require more maintenance, more servicing, and you're putting a lot of extra wear and tear on the components. So it's not always the best idea just to go for the maximum power. As we always say, you just need to choose a power level that is appropriate for your car and for your needs. And that's something we help you to decide on in our videos. And we've got some very detailed videos coming up on specific engines and the best ways of tuning them and some of the common pitfalls and problems to look out for. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we'd love you to stay tuned.